like fresh catfish? Hey guys, welcome to Cross Chop and welcome to episode 14 of The Collecting Saga. Today I've got over 40 video games to show you across a bunch of different platforms, so let's go ahead and jump right into these. <coughs> this first set of games came from a thrift store that I visited while on my lunch break one day. The first two here are a couple of bargain bin DS games, Jewel Quest Expeditions, and America's Test Kitchen the Let's Get Cooking edition. Carrots and peppers, carrots and peppers. Three Wii games, including My Sims Kingdom, Sega Bass Fishing, and Barbie Horse Adventures Riding Camp. <laughs> Around the same time, I was in Indiana visiting some family, and I stopped in at a pawn shop that I frequent whenever I'm in the town, and it was there that I found the majority of the games I'm gonna show you today. The first one is NASCAR Thunder 2003. The second is Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. The third is Day of Reckoning 2. The fourth is World Series of Poker, the official game that allows you to play the pros. And the final one is Tony Hawk's American Wasteland with a big black B on it. <laughs> on that same visit to that same pawn shop, I grabbed two PS Twice games, and we've got Grand Theft Auto Vice City and Guitar Hero 3. Legends of Rock. There were five cartridge-based items that I picked up at that pawn shop, and the first one was World Driver Championship on the N64. The label on this one isn't great, so I may look for an updated version somewhere down the road, but for the time being, it's another one off my list. Golf on the NES, Ice Hockey on the NES, Aerobiz, a somewhat uncommon game on the Super Nintendo that I found that I really don't enjoy at all, and a Game Shark Pro for the N64. I mainly got this so that I could try out the My Life in Gaming N64 anti-aliasing hack that they detailed in a recent video and so far I haven't been able to use it much I got Mario 64 to boot up successfully but other games have not so I need to tinker around with it a little bit more now the highlights of that trip by far in my opinion were the Sega Genesis games that I'm about to show you because almost all of them were complete the first one is the arrow acrobat shadow dancer the secret of shinobi x-men spider-man x-men wolverine adamantium rage Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, and I was really thrilled to find this one in the stack. And my personal favorite of the bunch, and coincidentally the one in the best condition, Rocket Knight Adventures. Unfortunately, this is one of the many from that lot that is complete and in great shape. The next seven all came from Half Price Books over Memorial Day weekend because they were hosting a 20% off sale. So the first one is Endless Ocean, Blue World, and it includes the bonus We Speak peripheral inside. Metal Arms, Glitch in the System. Catwoman, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. Nicktoons Unite, Dead to Rights, the limited edition Sun Faded version, and Time Splitters 2. Pretty happy to add this one to my collection. Also on Memorial Day weekend, I found myself briefly in a GameStop where I picked up a copy of Dark Jason. Untold Legends Dark Kingdom on the PS3, Doom 3, the BFG edition, Mad World on Wii, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, and most excitingly, Bayonetta 2 with the original Bayonetta game included on disc. I felt really lucky to find this one because I've seen it on Amazon and eBay and other places for 90 or even 100 or more dollars recently. Around that same time, I worked out a really nice deal with a fellow member of the St. Louis Retro Gamers Group for a bundle of Castlevania games and Castlevania-related items. The first game was the Castlevania Adventure on Game Boy, Castlevania Curse of Darkness on original Xbox, a demo disc from the official Xbox magazine for that same Curse of Darkness game, the totally unauthorized Castlevania 64 guide from Brady Games, the Castlevania 64 copy of Nintendo Power, a CIB copy of Castlevania on N64 complete with a box protector, as well as a CIB copy plus box protector of Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. And since I'm going for a complete N64 loose cart set, I'm really happy to have this because this box and the manual are pretty uncommon. Thanks so much once again, Matt, for striking that awesome deal. I really appreciate it. The final two games I'm going to show to you occurred when my brother visited me from out of town. He lives over in Kentucky. And I picked up this first one while at Vintage Stock because I didn't have it, and I'm a big fan of the franchise, and I'd always kind of been curious about this game, even if it's not really a canonical entry in the story of this franchise. But I got Metal Gear Solid VR missions for PS1. The disc, the manual, and the back label are all in great shape, but the case was pretty beaten up, so I actually went ahead and replaced it. So now it looks like nearly a brand new copy of this game. And the final game I'm gonna show you in this episode of The Collecting Saga 
came from my brother. That was part of the reason that he actually visited that weekend. And I'm so excited to have it because it's now the rarest game in my GameCube collection. As far as I know, it's really only missing two of the components that it originally came with, which does drop the value of it somewhat, but I really don't care. It's mostly complete otherwise in terrific shape. And it's Pokemon Box Ruby and Sapphire. For those of you who aren't sure, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this was only offered at the Pokemon Center in New York City for a while. And it came in a big box, of course, and it's not even really actually a game. It's an organizational tool for your digital Pokemon that you catch in Ruby and Sapphire. But it's really neat because it came with a Game Link cable. You can use a Game Boy Advance to actually play Ruby and Sapphire on your TV, I think, without the use of a Game Boy player. And it came with this really neat special memory card you can see here. It's blue on this side and red on the other side. The disc itself is in great shape, the manual's nice and clean, and it's actually still got the stickers that you could put on the memory card itself. In case you had a second one, then you could distinguish which ones you wanted to put in your blue memory card from the ones you wanted to put in your red, I suppose. But yeah, I'm extremely excited that my brother was able to find this. He found it at a place called Mega Replay, I believe, over in Indiana. And it's really awesome to have this as a collector and a fan of Pokemon. Anyway, guys, that wraps up this episode of The Collecting Saga. My name is Chris, and if it's your first time here and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out at Cross Shop today, and as always, play heavy. <laughs>